Hello everybody, my name is Archit Kamat. Uh, I'll be handling two subjects uh, as you know. I'll be handling control systems and signals and systems. This video is basically my introduction to control systems where I'll be telling you uh, what all topics we'll be covering, uh, what is the importance of each topic and uh, how frequently uh, GATE has asked some questions on it or IES has also asked some questions on it, how frequent they are. All right. So to start with, uh, control system syllabus is uh, having two main domains. All right. So the first domain is the time domain analysis and then the frequency domain analysis. Before getting into these two domains, uh, there are some intermediate steps that we need to take. All right. So the first thing that you know, all of you, that since the name is also suggesting control systems, first we would want to know what all are the representations of systems all right what all what all constitutes of a system all right there are electrical systems mechanical systems electromechanical systems now uh, for example since uh, emphasis is on electrical engineering in this institution and even i am an electrical engineer you see all of the dc machines that you are doing or any of the machines for that matter they are all electromechanical systems why because you see induction motors have rotating parts then it has an electrical circuitry for the armature and so on and so forth right so the first important thing that we have to do while getting into control systems is mathematical modeling of physical systems physically existing systems we want to mathematically model them right so this is the first chapter or uh, rather the first topic that will be handled so all right Mind you, uh, if you will refer some of the other books or anything like that, these do not only constitute electrical, mechanical and electromechanical, there can be hydraulic systems, chemical systems as well, but they are not of interest to us, not because we cannot handle them or we are electrical engineers so we can't handle them, it's not like that, it's just that they are not very frequently asked in competitive exams, alright, you still have a chance that you may get a question from mathematical modeling from electrical or electromechanical in your gate but you will not have hydraulic systems and other things so possibly if time permits at the end of the uh, session possibly we will uh, have a small video on that all right so after this the next thing is because most of the physical systems are interconnections of multiple systems so you are going to get many 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 interconnections of physical blocks right so what is the next thing that you have to do is you want to reduce them okay so there are mathematical techniques to reduce multiple connected blocks and we learn them in a law called as block diagram reduction technique so the next topic that we will be handling will be block diagram reduction technique so that will that is next so let me just write that After block diagram reduction, a special variant uh, of graphs called a signal flow graphs have been developed. Obviously to overcome some drawbacks, as you will attend my class, you will get to know there are some drawbacks of this block diagram reduction technique. You can't apply this everywhere. All right. So to overcome some drawbacks of this, there are signal flow graphs and frequent questions have been asked from block diagram reduction as well as signal flow graphs in gate and EAC, both in prelims and mains. So the next concept that I'll be handling will be signal flow graphs. SFGs as we call them all right and uh, a way to solve them is Mason's again formula so that will be the topic in that particular case after we have done this what we are going to do is we are going to divide the systems now we have finished representing the physical system we have got some transfer function or something of that sort some mathematical model has already been derived the next thing is we want to perform analysis to perform analysis we perform two types of analysis all right one is time domain analysis and the frequency domain analysis all right so those are the two major headings that i will be writing over here and then accordingly i will tell you what are what all are there inside them all right so there is time domain analysis and there is frequency domain analysis all right in the time domain analysis you have standard first order and second order systems 
all right and uh, how they respond to uh, different different types of inputs okay there are some test inputs uh, the moment you apply them to the standard first and second order system how they're responding now one my question key why don't we do for third fourth fifth so on so forth the reason is that if by chance you do for first and second order the higher order block diagrams that are there or the higher order systems that are there you can split them into some of this like for example if you have fourth order system you can split it into two second order systems analysis for both you can do separately and whatever response you are getting you can perform appropriate mathematical activities on them because these are usually linear systems right so whatever we are discussing so far are for linear systems the whole control system what you are going to have for gate are for linear systems so that is applicable right so we will only perform analysis for first and second order systems after we do that we are going to learn some a very very important and a little confusing concept called as steady state error right there is error analysis okay so different different systems will be there you will give it inputs different different types of inputs you will give you will see what will be the steady state error how they will respond once you know uh, steady state is reached okay once those are done then we go into frequency domain analysis all right uh, before that there are some plots in time domain analysis also which is in between these two all right that is rutherford's criteria we have uh, and then the root locus plot okay basically the whole concept of control system is to check stability of a system especially bbo stability as i will be telling in my first lecture right so when you want to do that there are some graphical methods to do it okay in the time domain uh, analysis or in the time domain uh, regime there are two techniques uh, one is the graphical technique that is the root locus plot that you have and one without even drawing any plots if you want to see the location of the poles and judge if a polynomial or the characteristic equation is stable or unstable you can perform rout hurwitz criteria okay moving to frequency domain analysis again uh, for a second order system standard second order system you will try to find some sort of parameters okay after that you will get into three important crucial topics okay uh, of frequency domain analysis that is polar plots nyquist plots finally bode plots okay so we will see in detail what are these plots when they can be applied what are the parameters there to judge the stability of a system more in detail okay uh, like uh, some of you may already be knowing there are something called as phase margin gain margin how to compute them without having any confusion in each case we will see that in detail there after these are done now we have understood what is the problem in the system what has happened how is its transient behavior how is its uh, behavior to sinusoidal inputs the next stage is to develop some sort of controllers and compensators right uh, if, uh, so the next stage will be compensators and controllers so let me just write that okay compensators and controllers so here you have lag lead and lag lead compensators uh, about its theory how it will affect the transient behavior how it will affect the steady state behavior and people usually have a lot of confusion in this case right so i will definitely share some of my experience and some shortcuts to remember the moment you see what type of a compensator it is you will be able to judge that it will affect which phase of the system whether it's the steady state whether it is uh, transient or what or where it will induce what sort of phase lead or phase lag you will be able to judge immediately all right on similar notion actually <clears throat> compensators also act like controllers so but there is a different category of controllers there is p pi pd and pid controllers okay we don't have complete design of these controllers uh, you do not study that in gate or even i don't know if that is a part of most of your btech syllabus or not but you will not design or develop controllers here but you will have to know the theory and what portion of what gets affected by applying each of these controllers in the system all right once we have covered this concept all of this come under classical control theory all right there are some limitations like for example uh, mimo system analysis is not possible it's not very easy right and uh, uh, representations of differential equations differential equations for complicated systems because more complicated in this case right so to overcome that there is a modern theory called as modern control theory a modern approach okay where you have lot of matrices and there is ease of computation so that will be the last portion of your control systems logic but that in itself is a pretty big 
concept. So uh, let me just write that down. Modern control theory. Control. All right. So we will see uh, things like what is state transmission matrix, how to find uh, transfer functions, how to compute uh, observability, controllability. Okay. Many people uh, directly get into applying the formulas, right, without even thinking uh, if they can do it or not. All right. I will show you shortcuts and techniques on how you can do this without having to even apply the formula just by looking at the equations, the state models or something like that. How you can just look at it and say whether it's observable or controllable and what it physically means. All right. So this basically is the outline of the control system syllabus that you have for gate and even ESE to an extent. Before I start with any of this, so let me just tell you the order in which I'll be handling these things. All right. Because uh, of the frequency of being asked in the gate is very important in this case because we are preparing for a competitive exam. Mathematical modeling will be handled very much at the end. All right. The reason being that you do not directly get any problems on it because all the problems that can be formed in mathematical modeling are pretty lengthy. And this is an objective type of an uh, exam that is gate. So you will not be asked a detailed or in-depth question on modeling. But even if it is asked, it will be very simple LCR circuits or something like that, which obviously you will you would have done in networks or uh, in any other course of similar type. Right. So this will be handled at the last. So we will start even before all of this, we will start with introduction to control, which will be one entire lecture uh, making you familiar with the terminologies, the tools that I will be using and also some concepts of transfer functions and uh, for initial and final value theorem. That particular thing is not mentioned here because it's not a part of the syllabus, but those are just the tools that you'll be using throughout. All right. But that is important because most of the questions in gate have come from that particular topic. So if you will be staying, uh, if you will stay tuned, basically, for my next lecture after this on control systems that is very important because if you'll just attend that i can assure you that you will definitely get at least one or two marks in the upcoming gate exam for starters second after i have handled uh, i'll start with block diagram as i told you i will go in the same sequence at the end i'll be handling mathematical modeling exclusively and my uh, way of teaching is something like this that after i finish a concept problems will be taken starting from very simple easy problems to something very complicated which is a little extensive which is a little controversial as you can name it because it should be different right so uh, where people get stuck where people can easily commit mistake what is the confusion that happens all of that will be handled okay so with that i would like to conclude my introduction to controls video please stay tuned uh, and uh, next class is pretty important which i'll be handling on controls uh, I assure you that if you'll attend that and then on, if you'll follow on, it will be very useful for any of the competitive exams. All your basics will get cleared. You will know how to connect this concept to electrical engineering and you will also be able to successfully write any uh, sort of a, uh, you know, may it be prelims or may it be mains where you have to write. I will also teach you how to write subjective answers, what is important, what they look for uh, also. I will tell you all of that. Right. So thank you very much.